Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today I'll be showing you uh, how to make your own unique lockpicking system or a lockpicking mini game, uh, similar to uh, what you might have seen in uh, games like Fallout or Dying Light, but with a bit of a unique uh, twist. So um, I'll, first, I'll show you how it works. So if we hop in to up over to the, the game. Now, when I walk up to this chest and try to open it, uh, it'll bring up my uh, lockpick uh, minigame system. So the idea here is to uh, move the mouse cursor uh, up along the Y axis and the X axis uh, to find the sweet spot for both the left and right lockpicks. So, You'll notice when you find the sweet spot, it'll start to wiggle and the timer will start to count down. When the timer reaches zero, uh, your lockpick breaks. But if you find both sweet, spot, sweet spots before uh, the timer winds down and you double click, you'll unlock the chest. There you go. So let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so first we need a few things. We need a uh, we need a widget, and to create a new widget, you want to go to uh, uh, right-click user interface and create a widget blueprint. We can name this WB lock picking. Now I've already got one created so I won't be creating it. So what you want to do is to bring in one, two, uh, three images. <clears throat> they don't need to be variables. You'll just want to have your lock to pick, which I designed in Illustrator. It took me a few minutes. Same with the other uh, with the lock picks, uh, I'll put those in the description for you if you want to use these particular uh, graphics. Uh, but feel free to make your own or use 3D graphics. It'll work with with either or. Uh, so you'll want to make your first image the lock to pick. It doesn't have to be a variable. You'll want to anchor it to the center, and you'll want to size it to content and uh, align it properly. Uh, to the anchor left and right uh, with the alignment here and uh, make it visible. So if you go down to the behavior, set visibility to visible and the lock pick uh, left is your next image. Okay, uh, all my images are 512 by 512 by the way. And uh, you'll want to set this, uh, you want to pick your brush and you'll want to set uh, the anchor to the center as well. Uh, uh, so in this case, because I want my, uh, my lockpick to pivot uh, right here, I, I had to play around with the numbers and I found that uh, this particular alignment works well with uh, this pivot so uh, sorry with the the angle here the 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 angle of the uh, the angle of the image so you'll want to play around with your particular graphics uh, your images might not be these so uh, th th these numbers might not be exactly the same the pivot numbers here uh, and the alignment numbers here. Uh, basically, you just want to find the right setting so that when you move the angle around, it rotates. It looks like it's rotating inside the hole. That's the idea. Okay, and you'll want to do the same with uh, the lockpick right. Uh, by the way, which which is a variable. Okay, so you'll need this image lockpick left and the image lockpick right to be set to its variable and you'll want to make them both visible and you'll need to set the angle and the uh, uh, pivot as well as uh, the alignment to uh, fit that same description so it looks like it's uh, fidgeting inside the bottom part of the keyhole here. So if I move the angle up and down you'll see 
Okay. Now don't worry about this left side because we're going to clamp the angle so that it can only go uh, between 0 and 15. Okay. So it can just wiggle a little bit here. Okay. So next you'll want to add a uh, background blur. So to find a background blur, you can just go to background blur and just literally drag it into the scene. Okay. Now, I don't need a second one, but there you go. Okay. And you'll want to anchor this to the full screen. And you'll want to set it uh, to uh, fill both horizontal and uh, vertical. And you'll want to set the blur strength to about 10. You can play around with these numbers, whatever you like best. And set the tint to uh, black with an alpha of something around 0.8. Okay. This just kind of blurs out the background, so it's easier to see the the lock the lock that you're picking. Is that a sip of tea? Um, and last, you'll want to uh, drag in a text, okay? And uh, you'll want to set your text uh, to be uh, alpha uh, Z order, sorry, not alpha, uh, Z order above uh, the other ones, okay? <clears throat> so the reason that uh, the reason that it was blurry before is that it was behind the background blur. So if I look at uh, the order, the order of my uh, my layers, you'll see <clears throat> the background is set to one, the lock is set to one as well, the pick is set to two, the right pick is set to three, and the text is set to four, uh, and so forth. Okay. So just make sure that your text appears on top. Uh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, you'll also want to set your background blur to visible so that you can click on it. If it's not set to visible, you won't be able to click on it. Uh, and same with your number. If the sweet spot ever lands specifically on this number, you won't be able to double click on it. It won't register unless, uh, unless you set the visibility to visible here okay so the idea is to be able to click anywhere on here to register our uh, our our try our attempt at lock picking and that's all you need for the uh the graphics uh the designer part of it and now we'll move to the 